On the morning of May 27, 2016, a sudden scream broke the usual calm. Priyanka, Yogesh's wife, burst out of their bedroom, shouting in fear and distress. She cried out that something terrible had happened to her husband. Yogesh wasn't waking up. He lay there completely still, looking as if he had slipped into unconsciousness. Her panic quickly caught everyone's attention, and people rushed to see what had happened. The news spread like wildfire, reaching Yogesh's parents, who arrived as fast as they could. Priyanka, visibly shaken, told them she believed Yogesh might have had a silent heart attack. Yogesh's father, who was a doctor, checked him and sadly agreed. It seemed like a heart attack had taken his son. Yogesh was taken to the hospital as quickly as possible. But despite all efforts, the doctors had heartbreaking news. Yogesh had passed away. Yogesh, only 42 years old, was not just a beloved husband and son, but also a successful businessman in the plywood industry. Despite everyone's shock, they could do little but accept the tragedy. Heartbroken relatives, close friends and neighbors all gathered to mourn the sudden loss. Priyanka was devastated. Her grief seemed to have no bounds. Surrounded by loved ones, she sat in tears, her sorrow too heavy to hide. Family members tried their best to comfort her, but nothing seemed to ease her pain. That same day, May 27th, Yogesh Batra's last rites were performed. In the days following Yogesh's sudden passing, his parents couldn't shake an uneasy feeling. Though Priyanka had insisted it was a heart attack, it was hard for them to believe. Yogesh had always been in excellent health, strong, active, and with no history of any illness. While heart attacks can happen without warning, the idea that Yogesh could be taken so abruptly didn't sit right with them. Secretly, they hoped for a post-mortem to clarify things, but Priyanka was firmly against it. Since there was no legal requirement for one, her wishes were respected. Days turned into weeks, and the family began adjusting to life without Yogesh, though his absence left a deep void. Yet something strange began to happen. Yogesh's mother, who was 65 years old, started having unsettling dreams. Night after night, she would see her son in her dreams, but he wasn't at peace. In each dream, Yogesh would tell her that he hadn't died from a heart attack. These visions left her deeply disturbed, feeling that her son was trying to send her a message. She shared her dreams with her husband, Yogesh's father, who was around 70. Although he initially brushed it off, as the dreams continued, he couldn't ignore them. The mother grew convinced that something about Yogesh's death was not right. Her worry and insistence soon began to affect the father as well. Although they had no concrete evidence, these repeated dreams made them wonder if there was more to their son's passing than they initially believed. However, unsure of what to do or say, both parents remained silent, burying their suspicions and grief within. After marriage, Priyanka, her husband and their children started living apart from his parents. There were the usual arguments and misunderstandings between the mother-in-law and daughter-in-law. Yogesh's father ignored his wife's concerns, assuming it really was a heart attack, especially since there had been no bad blood or reason to think anything was suspicious in Yogesh's case. Except for one question. How could he have a heart attack when he was perfectly healthy? Then unexpectedly, Yogesh's parents noticed a change in Priyanka's behavior. Her reaction didn't match what one might expect from a grieving widow. She seemed almost normal, even right after her husband's death. Soon after, Priyanka swiftly took control of Yogesh's business and appointed herself as a director in his company, completing all the legal paperwork without any delay. Within a month of her husband's death, Priyanka took over the business without hesitation, as if nothing was unusual. Although Yogesh's elderly parents had no interest in claiming any part of the business, they found her actions strange, but chose to stay silent. Then, about a month later, Priyanka did something that made them even more suspicious. She sent both of her children to study at a school in Dehradun, far from home. Until then, the children had been studying nearby. But now, 
right after their father's passing, she was sending them away. Yogesh's parents found this hard to understand. How could a mother make this decision so soon after losing her husband? Unable to ignore their concerns any longer, they felt something wasn't right. Finally, Yogesh's 70-year-old father went to the police station in Haryana for the first time and filed a complaint about his son's suspicious death. He included several details in his statement, like the fact that no post-mortem had been done and the last rites were rushed, with no investigation carried out. The police reassured the father, saying, It's okay, we'll handle it, but they assumed he was simply in shock and struggling to accept his son's death. They filed a report, but no real action was taken. It was just a formality. The father kept returning to the police station, but the case didn't move forward. Slowly, he understood that the police weren't going to do much, and he would have to look for other ways to get answers. The father knew that there were private detectives as powerful or well-connected as the police, could investigate cases for a fee, and work hard to find the truth. After some time, the parents found a detective agency and hired them to uncover what really happened to Yogesh Batra. The investigation into Yogesh's death slowly began to unfold as the detectives dug deeper into every detail of his life. They left no stone unturned, tracing back his steps to understand the man he had been. They learned that during his college years, Yogesh had crossed paths with Priyanka, a beauty queen who had won titles like Miss Khalsa and Miss Delhi in beauty pageants. Their relationship blossomed, and with the blessing of both families, they married after completing their studies. The couple went on to have two children, and from the outside, everything seemed perfect. But after Yogesh's sudden death, things took a strange turn. Within just two months of becoming a widow, Priyanka appeared to have moved on with an unsettling speed. It was as if her grief had faded away, and happiness had quickly returned to her life. She resumed her regular gym sessions, as though nothing had happened. The stark contrast between her previous sorrow and her current behavior raised suspicions. The detectives, sensing something was off, decided to focus on the relationship between Yogesh and Priyanka. They began speaking with several of their mutual friends, approaching them casually and under different pretexts to gather insights into their marriage. They wanted to understand the dynamics between the two, how well they knew each other, what their relationship had truly been like, and if there were any hidden secrets. The detectives also spoke to close relatives and even started keeping an eye on Priyanka, following her to the gym. In July, Priyanka traveled to Chandigarh, and the detectives followed her there. At the venue, they saw Priyanka enjoying herself, partying and dancing. She looked happy, which seemed strange since Yogesh had only passed away two months earlier. At the party, Priyanka was seen with a man, which caught the detectives' attention. They quietly took some photos, and using their connections with Priyanka's friends, managed to get clearer images. In some of these photos, Priyanka and the man appeared very close. The big question was, who was this man? Later, the detectives showed the photos to Yogesh's parents. As soon as his father saw them, he immediately recognized the man, saying he had visited their home several times. Further investigation revealed that the man's name was Rohit Kumar, a gym trainer at the gym Priyanka went to. While it was possible they were just friends, the detectives were shocked to discover that Priyanka had bought Rohit a car worth 36 lakh rupees as a birthday gift. Such an expensive present is typically given to someone very close. The detectives had done all they could, and now it was up to the police to take action. With enough evidence showing a possible relationship between Priyanka and Rohit, Yogesh's father took this information to the police. On September 14th, 2016, nearly six and a half months after Yogesh's sudden death, the police took a significant step forward. They registered an FIR, officially naming Priyanka and her alleged lover, Rohit, as suspects in the case. The investigation was reopened, and both Priyanka and Rohit were called in for questioning. However, by October 12th, the police cleared them of any involvement much to the disbelief of Yogesh's parents, who had been hoping for justice. 
Despite this setback, Yogesh's father refused to give up. He again asked the detective agency to collect more proof, as he plans to request help from higher authorities with all the evidence. The agency worked tirelessly, digging deeper into the details that had been overlooked. They managed to gain access to Priyanka and Rohit's call records, including their locations, specifically from the night of Yogesh's death. The findings were shocking. Between the evening of May 27th and the early hours of May 28th, Priyanka and Rohit had exchanged nearly 40 phone calls. But what stood out most was the tracking of Rohit's location between 1.01 a.m. and 2.30 a.m. that night, right in the area near Yogesh's house. This was the very night Yogesh was believed to have died from a heart attack. The timing and proximity raised a red flag. Priyanka had been in frequent contact with Rohit, and he was near her house during the critical hours of Yogesh's death. This suspicious pattern suggested that there was more to the story than anyone had imagined. Yogesh's father took all the evidence directly to the Haryana DGP. He laid everything out, the circumstances surrounding his son's death, Priyanka's suspicious behavior, her photos with her boyfriend, the call details, and location records. The DGP was both shocked and somewhat embarrassed, realizing that a 70-year-old man had been tirelessly seeking justice for months while the local police had done nothing. The DGP immediately transferred the case to the Carnal Police, instructing the local SP to lead the investigation. A special investigation team, SIT, was formed to carry out a thorough examination. Now the official investigation was in full swing. The father handed over all the details gathered by the private detectives to the SIT. The SIT questioned Yogesh's family members, neighbors, friends, and acquaintances. It was confirmed that Priyanka and the gym trainer, Rohit, had been seen together frequently, even openly walking around the city after Yogesh's death. Rohit had also visited Priyanka's home. The police officially obtained their call records and location data, confirming that Rohit's location matched Priyanka's house on the night of May 27th. Further investigation uncovered that on the night of May 27th, Rohit had used a fake number by inserting a different SIM card into his phone. The police were able to track this easily, as switching SIM cards on the same device is something they can detect. Priyanka and Rohit had spoken on the phone before, but that night, they used different SIM cards. Rohit had also made calls to two other people on that night. The police decided to take Rohit into custody for questioning first. On March 21, 2017, Rohit was arrested. After some intense questioning, he began to confess, revealing that Yogesh had been murdered and that Priyanka, his wife, was involved. The next day, on March 22, Priyanka was taken from her home in Yamunanagar. Finally, the truth behind Yogesh's death started to come to light. If you've watched until this point, please give a like to this video. Thank you. In 2015, Priyanka started gaining weight and decided to join a gym. There, Rohit worked as the instructor and began training her. Over time, Priyanka and Rohit became closer, eventually starting an affair. Whenever Yogesh was away, Rohit would visit Priyanka at home. In January 2016, Yogesh discovered his wife's infidelity. One day, he caught Priyanka and Rohit together in a compromising situation. Furious, he threatened to take them both to court and file a case unless they ended the affair immediately. For a while, things seemed to settle down. Prying apart from Yogesh could have meant a divorce, but Priyanka was married to a billionaire, while Rohit was struggling financially, living off borrowed money. Rohit owed money to many people, and Priyanka decided to take matters into her own hands. She planned to get rid of her husband to inherit his wealth and gain the freedom to be with Rohit. After his death, everything would be hers. The money, the property, everything. She believed that his elderly parents wouldn't be able to stop her. Priyanka shared her plan with Rohit, who agreed. Together, they knew they would need help to carry out the murder. Rohit enlisted two accomplices, Shyam Sundar, also known as Sonu, who worked as a hospital assistant, 
and Satish Kumar, a man from whom Rohit had borrowed money. Together, Priyanka and Rohit offered them $6,000 each to help with the murder. Their plan was to inject Yogesh with a sedative, strangle him, and then dispose of his body in a canal. They chose the night of May 27 to carry out their plan. Rohit and Priyanka communicated several times that evening using a fake SIM card to finalize the details. Around 10 p.m., Priyanka drove to the railway station in an Innova, where she picked up Sonu and Sadish. Rohit joined them in the car, and the group drove back to the house. The three men stayed in the car while Priyanka went inside. She left the back door open and instructed the men to enter when she gave them the signal. Priyanka then went upstairs to the first floor and waited for Yogesh to fall asleep. Around 11 p.m., when he was finally deep in sleep, Priyanka signaled for the men to enter through the back door. Once inside, the three conspirators had a quick talk about what to do next. Sonu, who worked in a hospital, had gotten two syringes and a sedative. He filled one syringe with the drug, and they all went to the bedroom. The noise they made woke Yogesh, and he fought back when Rohit and Satish tried to hold him down. Sonu tried to inject him, but during the struggle, the needle broke. The plan started to fall apart. Priyanka said that since Yogesh knew what they were up to, they couldn't leave him alive. There wasn't enough time to get another syringe, so they decided to smother him with a pillow, and Priyanka helped with this. They needed to make his death look natural. Priyanka suggested leaving his body in the bedroom and pretending he had a heart attack, which would make it look like a normal death. Yogesh had no visible injuries, which helped make the death seem natural. The men left, and Priyanka cleaned up the room, waiting until morning to act. When the sun came up, she began screaming for help, crying, and saying her husband had died of a heart attack. Yogesh was rushed to the hospital, where doctors confirmed he was dead. Before they could do a post-mortem, Priyanka brought his body back home, convincing everyone he had died from heart attack symptoms. With her father being a doctor, Priyanka knew the right symptoms to mention, making her story more believable. Even her father agreed it seemed like a heart attack. This convinced everyone, and Yogesh's funeral went ahead. By March 24, 2017, Sonu and Satish, the two hired killers, were arrested. About 25 people gave testimony in the case, and technical and circumstantial evidence played a key role. The charges against the four accused, under sections 302, 506, 120B, 201, and 203 of the IPC, were proven in court. On August 6, 2021, Priyanka, along with Rohit, Sonu, and Sadish, was sentenced to life imprisonment for Yogesh's murder. So, that's the story for today. Let us know what you think in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and help us reach 70,000 subscribers. Thank you.